Hi, welcome to Experiential Lit. Water, source of all life on our planet. 70% of the Earth's surface is covered by water. The only problem, 97.5% is salt water and the rest accounted as fresh water is locked up in ice and some available underground. Let's bring in some perspective. Almost 1 billion people do not have access to clean water. That's about 1 in 3 people globally. Estimates say by 2025, two-thirds of the world's population may face water shortages. So, how about we take all the sea water, filter out the salt and solve the water crisis? This is the idea desalination aims to provide. In this episode, let's take a deep dive and look into the solution and problems of desalination. In 2015, South Africa, the water Skloof Dam water dropped to critical level due to series of droughts, a source to 4 million people, sending red alerts and limiting consumption to 87 litres of water per person per day. You can see the decrease of dam water to 12% capacity in 2018. These are not rare cases. All around the world, scarcity of fresh water is increasing and will impact our daily lives. To the point from drinking water to the places we choose our vacations. To overcome this, humans have been using desalination process for thousands of years. The principle remains the same, but with new technology, sophisticated methods have been introduced. For starters, let's take a look at the basics. Three types of principal methods of desalination exist. The oldest method, thermal desalination in which water is boiled and then steam is collected, leaving the salt behind. This requires significant amounts of energy to get water to vaporization stage. The reason being, water is a slow conductor of heat. The second method uses electric current. A predefined salt level is known in water and required electric charge is used to separate the ions with permeable membrane, but is limited to treatment of low salinity water. And the third method Reverse osmosis used with multi-level filtering and later processed with high pressure through a semi-permeable membrane leaving salt behind. This method is by far the most widespread application for membrane in water treatment. Today, there are over 16,000 operational desalination plants in the world. The Middle East is home to over 70% of it. The biggest plant in the world can be found in Saudi Arabia, Ras Al Khair Power and Desalination Plant. It has a capacity to produce 728 million litres per day. It began its operation in April 2014 and won the Global Water Awards, Desalination Plant of the Year Award in 2015, followed by other plants in countries like Australia and United States. So, have we solved the water crisis? Desalination has been touted as a solution on large scale, but its dark side is not to be overlooked. For the very reason it being exorbitantly expensive requires large amounts of energy, only oil and gas rich countries can operate it presently, depleting non renewable resources. It is damaging environment, plus it is only really viable for coastal communities. Perhaps the most detrimental aspect from the process has to be leftover salt called as brine, which is released back into the sea, devoid of dissolved oxygen and extremely concentrated. It can sink to the bottom, destroying organisms on the seabed and cause environmental impact. 
expected that the global water desalination market is likely to witness a firm growth at an annual rate of 7.8% from 2018 to 2025. Recently, in an article from MIT News, mentions that brine can be used to convert into useful chemicals, in turn helping the desalination process as well. There you have it, desalination with its solutions and implications. I'll leave you with a thought or perhaps a question. As the world's population continues to grow, existing water supplies depleting, desalination plants will be needed more. But again, with technology, the brine has to be dealt and solutions have to be discovered. If marine life protection are put in place and renewable energy is used, do you think desalination is the answer to water crisis? Let me know in the comment section below. That's it for this episode. If you like this video, do subscribe and feel free to give a thumbs up. If you're looking for more or curious about our other videos, I'll leave the links below that might interest you. Anyways, this is Noreen, you've been watching Experiential Lit. See you soon.